Hello, third graders. Welcome to lesson 4.9. Uh, today, we're going to be talking some more about area. I'd like you to open up in your math journal to page 124. All right. And what we're going to work on is this math message first. This says a cloud is partly covering this rectangle. See it? We have to figure out the area of the rectangle. So I want you to think about how you could figure out the area. We know there's something under this cloud. How you could figure out the area of this rectangle, even though you can't see all the boxes. Take some time and be ready to explain what you did. All right, first, what was your answer? How many, how many squares do you think that are uh, rectangle has. And how did you figure that out? All right, well, let's talk about this, right? Because what, what, I, what I probably heard was, what was great about this is that we could see, remember area is the inside. So we're looking to count squares on the inside. Here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? So this row has nine. If I know that this row has nine and this row has nine and this row has to have nine and this row has to have nine and this row has to have nine, doesn't it? Right? So now I have five groups of nine. It's like I have an array. Oh, isn't that nice how all of those things kind of come back together here, right? So five groups of nine, five times nine the area of this one is 45, okay? Let's see if there's, oh, we already talked about that. So uh, our goal here is to be able to find areas of rectangles and write matching number sentences. And we're really going to think about arrays as we are finding the area of a rectangle, which is part of our uh, state standard there, right? So see this array? Right, this rectangle represents the front cover of a notebook that you want to cover with one inch square stickers. Right, so just this inside this red part, we want to figure out what the what the area of this red part is. Now, could we count every single square? Yes. Will that take a long time? Absolutely, but it is a strategy, right? Where we just count the squares and sometimes with weird shapes, right? With weird shapes that kind of have parts that stick out. We, we want to use that, right? We want to count up all those squares. When we have a rectangle like this, we can think, well, how? This is like an array. Imagine that this is all X's. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. There's 10 in each row. Let's see how many rows there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So think about this. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. I just saved myself a lot of time, right? Or I have, could you know, I counted by tens, but that's the same as 10 times eight. So our, our answer here is 80 units squared. The little two means that we're talking about squares. I figured out the amount of space inside by thinking about arrays, right? Instead of seeing circles or, or X's here, now my arrays are kind of boxes. All right, uh, let's continue on this page, uh, page 124. I think that's what page we were on before. Am I right? Yep. All right, so we're going to continue on this with our lesson here. So Listen to your teacher's directions for problems one and two. So you're going to write with me. First thing we are going to do is draw an eight by eight rectangle. And let's see if we can make this bigger because that is so small. There we go. All right. So we're going to draw an eight by eight rectangle. So we need to write eight by eight. And as we draw this rectangle, we're going to come down eight. So watch this. One, got to count carefully. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Phew, I got it in just in, in the right amount of space. 
And then over eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh man, I'm glad I didn't start any farther over. Okay, now the, once I have those two sides, the rest is easy because if this side is eight, I can just make this one be the same. And if this side is eight, then I can make this be the same. And so how many rows do I have? Well, I'll work you through this one. You'll help me with the next one. How many rows do I have? Well, I have eight rows, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And how many squares are in each row? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you might be thinking, those are the same numbers that were up here. Yes, they are. So what's my area? I have eight times eight. That's one of our squares. And when you, if there's some facts here that you're not sure about, you can try to use one of those um, fact tables uh, that we have. So an area, eight times eight is 64. And if you didn't know eight times eight, then you would count all the little boxes, right? You would count them and get 64. So our number sentence, eight times eight equals 64. All right, number two, let's do together. We're going to draw a six by seven. All right, here we go. Six down. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six. Remember, you're writing with me here so that you can turn this in later. And, oh, I forgot to write our numbers up here. Six by seven. And now seven across. One, two, three, four, five, six. Whoa, too far. <laughs> seven. And then we just match the other ones for the other two sides, right? because they have to match, because they're all rectangles. Opposite sides are congruent. That means they're the same. There's our rectangle. So first, how many rows does our rectangle have? We'll count them. One, two. How many rows do we have? We have six rows. How many squares are in each row? One, two, three. Count them. There are seven in each row. So how many squares are there in this entire array? How many? You can count them all up if you're not sure. How many? 42. Okay, if you had anything other than 42, it means you just might not have counted correctly. And so what is our number sentence here? Six times seven equals 42, which we know, right? Seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42. There it is, 42. All right, let's see. We've got a little bit on this. We're gonna do actually one of these on the next page together, and then you get to finish. You're gonna be finishing uh, Math Journal page 125. So make sure you're writing with me here. Otherwise, you're gonna have to go back and do it all by yourself. All right. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Let's pick the first one here to do. Let's get rid of that. We are going to do, ooh, we're going to do number one together. And then you get to finish this page. This is a blank by blank rectangle. Look at these. What, what two numbers need to go in there? Eight and four, right? What is the area? The area is the number of the inside, right? How many squares are there? 32. And so put these together into a number sentence. What's the number sentence that goes right there? Eight times four equals 32. Okay, so now as you keep going, let's just preview what you're going to do. Number two is set up the same way as number one. Number three is very similar. Let's get rid of that. 
but you're going to have to decide there's there's there, the, the sides aren't labeled are they right it doesn't say here it says 10 and 5 but i'm sure you can count right and figure out how far it is on this side right three and how far it is on this side and then number four is the same as number three number five and number six don't have any squares but you can use your good brain to figure out right watch the pattern so that you can see what you're going to do and or when there's no um squares there all right uh third graders. Uh, that is all for today. We really dove deep into area, right? Area is the inside of a shape. We talked about the uh, how we can use arrays to figure out the area so we don't have to count every single square, right? That's a, that's a good strategy, but the strategy will be a little bit faster. If you have any questions on area, be sure to let me know. And...